In this video, we'll use something called declining balance depreciation. Please pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So in this problem, um, there's some similarities to the problem we, where we looked at uh, straight line depreciation in terms that we have the same uh, value of the asset initially. So our P, we read in the problem, is $150,000. Um, the difference here is that the question instructs us to use declining balance depreciation. Well, what does that mean? In contrast to the straight line depreciation, if we view declining balance depreciation as the same type of graph where we look at the book value of the asset over time, and we, have, we start with a certain purchase price, so for instance, in this case, $150,000, rather than the book value declining linearly, the book value now declines each year as a percentage of the previous year's ending book value. And if you connect the dots for each of those discrete time frames, you would end up with something that looks sort of like this, where each interval of time is associated with a particular depreciation expense. And this depreciation expense, or loss in book value, is a percentage of the book value at the beginning of the year or the end of the previous year. We almost always use years as the, uh, the time frame or the time interval in depreciation problems. That's related to the accounting and the financial statements of a company, which are prepared yearly. So all we need to know to define the, the shape of this line is really the rate. So by what percentage does the book value decline each year? And we're told in the problem that the depreciation rate is 20%. And we use little d to denote our depreciation rate. Later on, we'll learn sort of where this depreciation rate comes from in real life. Um, in Canada, uh, we separate assets into classes, and each different class of asset uh, has a different depreciation rate associated with it. But in this problem, we, we're just given the rate of 20%. We don't need to determine what type of asset and what accounting depreciation rate is specified uh, for any particular accounting uh, jurisdiction. So uh, in, in viewing how this works, it's really quite simple. If we'd like to calculate how much the asset declines in value over the first year, we could actually just work it out. Um, we could say, well, I could even just use the variables for this. If I start here with the value of P as the initial book value of the equipment at time t equal to zero, and I simply multiply by one minus D, where D is the depreciation rate. So if you just think for a moment with the numbers, if I plug in 0.2 here, or my 20%, I'm really multiplying P by 80% or 0.8. So what it means is at the end of the first time period, the value of the asset is 80% of what it was at the beginning. And the amount that the uh, asset declined in value is the depreciation expense for that year. If we continue on, you can see quite clearly that the next uh, depreciation calculation will now have a starting value that is the ending value of the book value at the end of, of the previous year. And again, we would simply multiply by 0.8, this number by 0.8 to get this number. If we do that conti suc uh, in successive years, really all we're doing is raising this to the power of n. So we're multiplying by 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, n number of times. In fact, we can use this to, to develop the equation. So the book value at the end of year n 
is really the purchase price times 1 minus d to the n. And if we work out what that is for this problem, it's 150,000 times 1 minus our 20% raised to the power of 4, where we were asked in the problem, what was the book value at the end of year 4 using declining balance depreciation? So if we work out what this is, we have 0.8 to the power of 4 times 150,000 and we should obtain a value of $61,440 and that would be the book value at the end of year 4. So the answer to this problem, using declining balance depreciation, the book value at the end of year 4 is $61,440.